When Mercury, the messenger of the gods, the guy who's in charge of marketing, merchandising, mercantile and markets, goes into his home sign of Gemini, things go quickly, things go speedily, things go pretty well when it comes to communication. And we're going to experience some of these good parts of Mercury's story as he moves into his Gemini place starting on this June the 11th through to June the 26th. As he makes his way through that part of the sky, he's going to make some very flowing and happy contacts with the goddess of money and love, Venus. With Saturn, he has a bit of a difficult time, but it's short-lived, and he also flows in a glow up with Mars, the god of action, decisions, and willpower. For the most part, this is going to be a pretty lovely time. In some, some area of your sky, you have 12 chunks of real estate in your natal sky. They're called your houses and those houses have meanings and your Gemini whole sign house is where this energy of a dignified Mercury in his home territory will benefit you. So we're going to talk about all signs. I'm not going to use this as a mundane astrology this time. I'm not going to talk a lot about the collective and what's going on. Somebody trolled me in my last video said, who cares about Biden? It was a part of a mundane part of the astrology in the beginning where I often talk about a world events and world leaders and world situations in well in context to the sky as it occurs as we experience it. Today we're talking just about your sign. Um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Lori Lothi and I'm using the whole sign house system. I am also a Hellenistic astrologer but with bits of Babylonian and other stuff in, so a traditional astrologer. I focus on prediction and using the sky as a map and a navigational tool. Um, so we're very predictive here. We don't really talk a lot about ascension and cosmic waves of awakening, although I do not just necessarily disagree. So you're looking at this as a very practical tool with me, I hope. My name is Lori Lothian, if I didn't say that. And um, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please consider liking, hitting the subscribe button, bell for notifications, guys. Our channel is at 29,700 subscribers when I record on May 30th, and I'm aiming for the unrealistic goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2024, but why not shoot for, the, shoot for the moon? So help me get there, I'd appreciate it. And everything about me is in the description box below. Everything I do, you can find out more about me, my classes, I'm unfortunately booked to the end of the year for readings. Um, I'm not available till next January right now. I may even close that calendar up just because I need to reset my life here. Um, and decide when I want to open the cart again for sessions. But if you want to take classes with me, that's easy to do. Join my Patreon community, get to do some twice a month meetings with me privately, like with smaller groups of people where we talk about astrology and connect together. So, and for $5 a month in Patreon, you also get ad free content, early access, everything on YouTube. You get to receive before the general public and without any ads, of course, until it's no longer in the public domain and then the ads boot back up. All right, let's get going. Let's talk now. And this Beautiful earrings by Milena Devi of Goddess Treasure Co. at Etsy, a friend of mine. I, I'm just showing you her in the, this month ahead. I'm wearing them a lot, so they're on my ears. Um, often I have her earrings on my ears. She's a friend of mine. If you're interested in learning more about her art and her handcrafted earrings and your woman or a guy giving a gift or who cares what gender you are, <laughs> uh, go check it out. All right, so let's, in the description box, link to her Etsy site. All right, so let's start off by saying what does Mercury do uh, in general? He can be about communication, emails, phone calls. He can be about technology. He can be about your mind and how you think, ideas. Um, he can be also about your social life sometimes, especially in Gemini. And he also rules things to do with markets, merchandising, commerce, and commercial interests, okay? So when he moves into Gemini, his home sign, let me give you a picture of the sky. Um, he basically is going to be in his home kingdom. He owns both Virgo, the earth sign of Virgo, and he owns the Gemini uh, air sign, and that's his real estate. And this chart shows you, um, unfortunately, uh, we've got to go back in time, that he will be moving through the sign of Gemini. Let's just put him up there where we can all see him at the top of the Gemini sky. I'm sorry, that's kind of making me dizzy too. But anyway, I'm going by hour. That's my problem. I apologize. So we'll just move him back to the beginning of the story. There he is at zero Gemini. He uh, gets in on June 11th. You can see he's up at the ninth house in a Vancouver, Canada chart. Um, but that's kind of not here nor there. When he gets into the sign of Gemini, he is going to be more active when and more focused on the things he does very well. Communicating, phone calls, emails, messages, things to do with ideas, the mind, and marketing, commerce, and messaging 
all of those things. So he's in his form. He moves quickly through here. He's out by June the 26th. And he also does this once a year, so it's not rare. But this time around, he's going to enter in when Juno, the goddess of commitment and love and vows and contracts, kind of like, I agree to be your business partner. I set the sacred vow. I agree to marry you. I agree to stick with it. I will persevere. Those are some of the Juno energies. Juno is sitting in the sign of Gemini, the twins, or two beings, interestingly, ever since way back on May the 2nd, she entered into Gemini, and she will leave on June the 22nd. So she's going to spend the majority of her time co-present with Mercury. And the sun will also be in that part of the sky with Mercury. So there's a sort of energy we want to talk about when Mercury is with these two, and what it might mean, what it is, what it might imply for the world. There's going to be also a energy of a new moon coming through the sky on June the 17th. And that will be happening uh, around 26 degree Gemini with sun, moon, and Mercury all piled up together and Juno still there. That's an interesting time for all of us in terms of themes of commitment, vows, agreements, contracts maybe, and things to do with new beginnings as well. So keep uh, your eye on that time frame around June the 17th. And you know, for the world, well, Mercury in Gemini is in the house of and open enemies for the United States of America, visible enemies or opponents, and Mercury is a communication. The sign of Gemini can represent fighting the twins and the war in Ukraine, fight brothers, neighbors fighting against each other kind of vibe, quite possibly. We may see the energy of some negotiation or new communications. I'm recording on a day when the news story, May 30th, talked about drones landing over or pummeling Moscow, we've definitely moved out of a localized conflict if that is the case. And that's very much a daunting prospect to consider an open war with Russia and uh, not this other covert war that's been going on. So bottom line, um, with Mercury moving into the open enemies chart part of the USA, maybe there'll be some deals brokered between conflict areas like Taiwan and China, or even um, the Ukraine and Russia, or even Iran and the United States, the United States may get involved in trying to maybe negotiate or a compromise, make a deal. There's a good Mercury thing. Who knows? Any of this is possible. Um, so the other thing I'd say is that the Venus story and the Mars story are important. As you can see, there's Venus and Mars trundling their way through uh, Leo. I have whole videos on Venus and Leo coming out. The first one's already out. There'll be more. And these videos are going to be really diving into this very extraordinary time with Venus in Leo. So check those videos out for four whole months. But in, in the meantime, you can see that Mercury will be here. And the first thing he's going to do, like in his passageway through this part of the sky, is touch down. And I'll talk about your sign. I will get there. But he will touch down very briefly with Saturn in Pisces. Now, because Saturn hasn't been in Pisces for 30 years, it's a fresh energy of a conflict energy or a square between Mercury and Saturn. And, you know, so many ways that can look, so many ways it can play out. Saturn, it says for the world in the Sibley USA chart, is in the fourth house of the Sibley chart. Is that correct? Yes. And that could be something to do with the opposing party from the one in power, um, conflicting with the god of information and news, literally what comes onto the news cycle in Gemini. Like, for example, if it was about open enemies in war, and, and all of a sudden the United States says they want to declare war on Russia openly, and uh, and the Republicans start to do, to say no to the Democratic government, I'm just making stories up, that would be kind of maybe a story like that, some kind of opposition to some kind of opponent decisions or news cycle stories, I don't know. But in your own chart, it could be an area where you're experiencing some compression and restriction and contraction, and Mercury's like not down for that. He's like not like he's wanting to kind of combat it maybe, good word for that, or to um, speak against it or to, you know, I don't change the direction of some conflict. Mercury doesn't like being in Pisces, just so you know. It's a sign of his detriment. And so he's, he doesn't even want to look over at Saturn because it's a place he's really awkwardly placed in. And in his own kingdom, he's strong. And Saturn isn't as strong as Mercury here. So I think that Mercury is going to have a lot of weight during the square, kind of win the day, you know what I mean? Especially with the sun in his kingdom at the time of the conflict, which is June the 15th, or the tension in the sky.
And then as we move forward, Mercury around the 17th will come into a flowing contact with Venus. And that's going to be that 11 degree, 11 degrees, as you can see. I hope that's clear to you. Maybe I should be annotating. But anyway, there's Mercury. Yay. And there's Venus. Yay. I'm terrible at this annotation. And this flow energy is lovely. Now, after having some debate with Saturn, there's kind of a sweet glow up and a flow between Mercury, news and information, money, goddess, um, love goddess in Leo. Hmm. In the United States chart, just for example, this is a ninth house of foreign lands and foreign shores, and Venus rules peace. Mars is a god of war. She soothes him up, man calms him down, and brings something softer there when she first arrives on June the 5th, or is it the 3rd? No, June the 5th. And so he will have been combatively there in the ninth house of foreign countries in the United States, and now there could be some peace in the sky tumbling into the 17th, some kind of deal making, peacemaking in the Ukraine or in Taiwan or in some other area of the world. But I'm talking about involving the United States. And then finally, um, this flow in your own life can be ah, great money stories, great news about love and romance, great, great developments. I'm going to delineate the Venus story with the Mars story. And I'm also going to, for each sign, briefly delineate the next thing that happens. Okay, so the next thing that happens of any note is that Mars gets involved with Mercury. Now, I need to get something out of my way because my chart is now gone kabuki on me. <laughs> I can't see anything. So the next thing we want to look at is the movement of Mercury towards Mars. And that's going to be precise on the 21st of June. Yes, the solstice. We're baking in a summer solstice energy with this energy of Mercury at 17 degrees and Mars at 18. And then on the solstice, the 21st, the sun ingresses into Cancer, the beginning of the summer solstice. And we see Mercury at 19 degrees and Mars at 18. So over the 20th, 21st, there is a flow between the God of marketing, merchandising, communication, messages and ideas, and Mars, the God of war. Again, I think we're looking potentially at some kind of brokering of peace or deal making around peace sometime in the month of June. I know that it would be a very good thing for the world, but also the United States is aware <laughs> it would be a very good thing for many reasons in the country, including the stock market. Alrighty, so then let's get going and talk about your sign. Um, I don't know if I'm going to spin the wheel of the chart today. It could be helpful for people. I guess I will. So I'm going to stop the share for a minute. I'm going to clean the chart up. So if you want to learn astrology, you'll see what I'm seeing. There are timestamps to jump to. There are chapters to jump to. Timestamps in the comments that I'll create. Or, and then there's jump ahead, click the button in the chapters, and you get to chapters by clicking the title of this video, and you can jump to your sign as well. Hope that's useful. This is not a long video. This is one of my shorter ones. I always do shorter Mercury videos, and so let's get going. Hey, if you're watching the live premiere, don't forget to hit my like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much. I appreciate you helping me grow this channel, which is my business. And yes, there are ads here because that's how I make money. You don't like ads, pay YouTube five bucks a month or something to be ad free or join my patron community. Alrighty, just a reminder that I do this for my living. A majority of my work uh, money right now is coming from my clients, but also vast uh, one third of this comes from the ad, ads on YouTube. All right. I don't set the ads. They do. I have to go back and change the ads. But so like whatever, change the settings or delete the ads I put in there. Let's get going. I'm going to start with Aries. I'm going to uh, pause just for a sec while I set the chart up. One last thing I forgot to mention, and that is the last time Mercury made contact with Saturn was at the 29th degree of Aquarius around March the 2nd. Let me double check my notes. Shoot, I wrote it down. And that should be noted, guys. I think it was March the 2nd. Let's take a look. Well, that's my memory. And so go back to around March the 2nd because you have to think of it this way. Mercury makes contact with Saturn and then he goes forward. And then because he spent like two months in Taurus with a retrograde, he wasn't doing much, you know, well, he was talking to Saturn, sure, um, in a sextile, which is flowing, but now he's in a square, which is a hardship angle. So it's called the first quarter square after contact with the planet. And so there's an energy around the squares. It's like something critical is turning or turning point from things going on on March the second ish also connected to your Aquarius house of your sky. So I'm an Aquarius rising. I could go back to things that were developing in my life around March the 2nd, perhaps. And then I can say when Saturn squares 
when Mercury squares Saturn coming up in this time frame, maybe some of that energy is going to re invite, be right, re invited into my narrative. Okay, maybe some possible way I'll see the connection from the March 2nd conjunction, I should say, of Mercury and Saturn at 29 Aquarius, and then the first square, quarter square that's happening in our sky around the 15th of June. Maybe you can connect those dates in your life in some fundamental way. All right, <sighs> let's get going. So we're going to get through this in a very pithy manner. You'll see this is more uh, a touching base with the general themes. Each sign I might focus on something different because each of you has different rulers. So let's go with that. In the meantime, um, let me get going with your story. Number one, if you are, I'm not starting with the Libra rising. Of course not. Sorry, guys. I always start with the good old Aries because it's easier. People are knowing to look for Aries and that's the order we go in. <laughs> There's this thing called the pin of shame. I saw it on another channel that I love, the behavioral arts. And somebody did a gnarly comment about I should not talk so fast and I shouldn't be a saleswoman. I'm doing it wrong. I'm not being a professional astrologer. If you don't like my talking speed, there is a playback feature on YouTube that you can use for free to play my videos back at whatever speed makes you the most comfortable for your ability. I have foreigners telling me that they barely speak English and I'm too slow for them. And I have linguistically normally people who I guess should get what I'm doing and understand me who say I'm talking too fast. So I have four planets and Aries. I do talk fast in the house of communication. And if it's not your style, I get it. Then you all you need to do is all you need to do <laughs> is do the playback speed slower. And as for being a saleswoman, you mean if I talk about stuff off my site, like my courses or reading site? Yeah, maybe that would be an idea because this is my business and my business channel. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to cue for you guys so you can watch the sky with me, but I'm having a little trouble because of the way this is working. So let's see if I can get it to work this time. You had to laugh at this. It should have been simple, but it's not. Okay, Aries, Sun. Aries moon and always and most accurate the rising sign though I I invite you to you know check if that's true if you have a stellium with your sun in one sign with like five planets there too and it's not your rising it's probably going to have a lot of weight so there's that as well or that your progressed sun is on another sign it might give it a little more weight but just listen to your rising for the most accurate uh, and you'll need your birth time. So check my description box for free content to do that. Let's get going. Aries sun Aries moon Aries rising sign. Number one, this is going to be Mercury moving through your third house of siblings, trips, travels, and journeys, and skills-based learning and education, as well as sometimes things to do with your everyday life. You know what you do on the daily. You get up, you take, you go to the neighborhood. The shops and restaurants are here. Mercury here can make you more sociable. It basically could give you a very um, upgrade in your social life, more events, more going out in the neighborhood, more enjoying yourself in the social environment between June the 11th and June the 26th. And it flows to your Aries identity. So it's very easy. It's a lovely transit. You often enjoy this tremendously. A lot of you will communicate more. You may write the House of Communications. You may get engaged in a writing process. Project, June 11th to 26th, I'm going to channel my third book. So um, bottom line, you'll find there's a lot of that need to communicate, but you're very fluent and good at it. If you make money online and you're like me, an entrepreneur in the online world, this can also up-level your marketing and merchandising and selling skills as you do those things. Really great, however, for trips and travel or connecting and be more, being more communicative with your siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews. If you're learning, you're learning something very rapidly, you're taking a class or a course, and it's easy for you and you can understand it. Now I'm going to focus on one thing for each sign and for Aries it's going to be the Mars thing because Mars is your ruler. What may happen when Mars okay is going to come into a sextile on June the 21st 2021st with Mercury. This is going to be a nice and flowing energy regarding love, romance, children, independent and entrepreneurial business as well as maybe something to do for some of you with conception because of Venus um, getting pregnant. I think it's going to be really good for your romantic life, especially around the solstice. If you guys are traveling, you and your partner are traveling, or it could also be really good as a business upgrade in terms of making money online, making your message very spread wide and far. And because that is happening on the 2021st, just before it, remember Venus gets first touch, right, with this Mercury. So that's also 
<laughs> around June the 17th. A sweet, lovely glow up when it comes to romance. And with Mars there, it's very sexual and hot too. So something coming around the 16th, 17th is super glowy for romance. If you're single and you're Aries and you're looking for love, this is going to be a very lovely time to find a relationship during this June 11th to 26th transit in the local neighborhood through travel or even through online dating apps. Alrighty. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. What's happening is you have this movement of Mercury every year through his home sign and your second house of earnings, money, negotiating, marketing, merchandising. Well, not marketing, but selling. You might sell something here. You might communicate with your voice something. It's a really lovely place for that too. Your, your vocal abilities are improved. Your communication skills are better than ever. The other thing you may have happening during this transit is you may want to buy or sell something. Often Mercury will encourage us to purchase or sell a thing, an object, or something we want. With Venus and Mars in the fourth house making contact between the 15th to the 21st kind of thing, you may also be in a position to sell or buy property. Okay, Venus is giving you a super luck glow up when it comes to property, land, and real estate all summer, June through October. And during the 15th of the month, just before that, with a square to Saturn, you may have to deal with something that started around March the 2nd that has to do with money and people who are trying to help you financially or gains from your career that may have been stalled or limited, and you're trying to break through a turning point here around June the 15th. The 17th is that sextile to Venus, and the 21st is Mars. A lot of you, it would be a really good time to even to buy a car, a new car, or sell a car, but also property and involvement with real estate can be very much highlighted between June the 11th and the 26th especially when it comes to contracts, deals, and negotiations, which is good until June 22nd, um, when we still have Juno in your second house. All right, so if you're a Gemini, sun, moon, and rising, of course this is a big deal for you, because this is your ruler. Chart ruler at home every year in Gemini feels good. No two ways about it. It just feels good to be having the ruler going through the sign of you. He has his joy in the first house in the ancient tradition. So you're going to be more talkative, more sociable. You're going to be more clear-minded. You may come up with some really new ideas, some great ahas coming through this part of the chart for you. Uh, it happens every year that you can download something idea wise it is quite great now when he comes through here he does have that little bit of a tussle with saturn as i mentioned earlier on june the 15th and that can just look like some kind of conflict with a person in authority in your workplace maybe go back to march 2nd to see how that might tie into events back then as we move forward he makes a flowing aspect to Venus, and that will be June 17th, and talking to Venus in the third house, followed by June 20, 20th, 21st to Mars. Well, third house things have to do with tri trips and travel that are not too far away, like local or not too, too distant, or within your country. You know, education, skills-based education, siblings and younger siblings. So a lot of Gemini people are going to go through those themes predominantly during June 11th to 26th, more acutely around the 17th to the 21st. It's a really ideal time because it's such flow from Mercury to reach out to make contact with any uh, estranged siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, or nephews, or to plan a trip or even journey to, on a trip with a sibling. But planning is a Mercury thing in the first house. You are the one in charge of making the itinerary, so to speak. And so you may make a travel itinerary regarding a younger or any sibling in general. And especially since Mars does rule the house of elder sibling, this Mercury-Mars contact can also involve elder siblings. You're moving forward, maybe even changing neighborhoods for some of you could be possible. And if you have your floating IC in the third house, for some of you, some of you Geminis, this can be a move. All right, Mercury is a deal maker. Mars is the guy who says, let's change our home. Venus says, let's make it easy, lovely, and prosperous. All right, keep that all in mind. Great time to learn something you really enjoy, that you're motivated and passionate to learn. That's a very good window from June the 11th to the 26th, online courses and such. Cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign. Now, if you're a Cancer, sun, moon, and rising, right? This is money stories with, oh, sorry. This is Mercury in your 12th house, June the 11th to the 26th. This is where you can get the most amazing insights from your dreams. He is the uh, dream messenger God. 
And so the 12th house invites that as well. It's also where you can have a lot of backroom deals and negotiations and communications regarding career, money, and work and stuff like that. Because Mars is involved from the second house with Venus, this can be negotiations in the back room uh, to do with uh, kind of new salaries, new pay structures, or new career and reputation things that you wish to advance in. Um, Mercury here can also could it increase your revenue from foreign countries, if that's something that you're into. And in our modern day, most people using online world as a business are receiving money from foreign shores because they use international clients, payment, payment processing processors. So that can really glow up that part of your chart and give you a lot more flow and luck and, and ease and grace and goodness and speed when it comes to making more money. I think that earlier square to Saturn mm, around the 15th of June, you know, it's going to be building a few days before and after. It could be some tension with somebody who's a father figure or third marriage partner or somebody in a spiritual authority place or even something to do with tension with an educational institution coming through your sky around that time. And then it smooths out by June 17th when Venus picks up the slack in a sextile and she says, let's make this all very easy. Let's make some money here. Let's give you some prosperity and your earnings and your resources. And Mars is also activating the idea that you may around the 2021st experience even a change in your earnings that Mercury and you are working on together and you structure a new way, a new way of making money, possibly a new job for some cancer rising. Um, because the ninth house is book publishing, and I know a lot of Cancer Risings with books in the hopper, you may come across an obstacle with the word book publishing, right? Mercury being the agent, Saturn in the house of publishing. So look for that possibility on June the 11th to the 26th, um, but most acutely around June the 15th. If you're a Leo rising, especially sun and moon, Mercury is going to spend June 11th to 26th in your 11th house of good spirit. This is a place of good luck. This is a place of karmic rewards. This is a place where your fairy godfather and mothers live. Um, friends try to help you, act like benefactors, act like big brothers supporting you. And this is the house of an elder sibling. So your 11th house has suddenly got a lot of communication and a lot of ideas going on here it can also be really good for merchandise and commerce energies to do with gains out of your Taurus rule 10th house career. You may be doing a little ka-ching, ka-ching as you're making more money than you usually do. And with Juno, you may be contracting or agreeing with someone who's very friendly to you to make some business partnership deals as well in that window of time. If that kind of stuff doesn't matter to you because you're employed and you don't need to make a business partnership deal, I'd say the gains in your career are picking up significantly during this window of time, June 11th to the 26th. Now with Mars and Venus in the house of you, you are beautiful and you are uh, charming and seductive and persuasive and and lucky. And um, and it's a glow of four months while she's there for you, big sweetness. But Mars is whipping through till July 10th. And so the two of them are pretty close all month. It's something like, well, first of all, are you, <laughs> Mars, the cosmic lovers in the house of you, you can be really hot and high and turned on by your own beauty, your own bod, your own self, just kind of loving yourself up a lot this time until July 10th. But you almost may have a push-pull between what you want to make happen in a harmonious way and what Mars wants to do in a fighting way. And you may be feeling that way about a, a friend, significant friendship um, or even a, a love partnership. So you got this tussle going on there. Um, but Mercury sextiles Venus and could give you a great opportunity to be more influential, to be more visible, to collaborate with somebody who's a friend or an elder sibling type in some fundamentally positive way. And you know, <laughs> the sun is with Mercury sextiling you until the 21st of the month of June. This is always a yearly glow up from the house of good spirit for you. And a Mercury is with that sun and they're both beaming love beams at you. So you should be really liking the feel on the yearly. Juno up here though, some of you are going to make a deal, contract with a friend or an agreement. Or if you're single, fall in love with somebody in your friendship circles, really between um, June 11th and 26th, if you're going to fall in love with a friend <laughs> or, you know, rom-com it, it's going to be closer to June 17th if you're single. And then lastly, June 21st is that Mars love up as well. That can look like mm, a lot of good things happening financially with great momentum from your career path. Moving on to the next sign. 
If you're a Virgo, sun, moon, and rising, which I have many in my life, and I remind you of who they are on the daily, but someone told me never to remind them again that my daughter is a Virgo rising. So I will do that. My daughter is a Virgo rising. So it's two of my friends now. So yeah, too bad if you don't like to hear about my life because I use people I know as examples. And I sometimes I just can't take it, guys. I know I'm supposed to be all super chill about it, but eh, I don't care. I like to troll the trolls. I'm never going to pretend I'm not who I am with four Aries planets. Um So bottom line here is that Mercury every year will move through your 10th house and this time it's June 11th to the 26th and this is good for your work, your career and your reputation. Honestly, it's first of all, there's fickleness and changeability in general with Mercury, but in his home sign, he's pretty strong. Some quick developments to do with deals, contracts, negotiations in your work and career space. With Juno up there, especially till the 26th, some of you, some 26th, 22nd of the month, some of you may sign a new contract or deal around your work situation, new terms of service, a new contract, a new position at work, even a new job, even a new job, especially when we talk about Venus in a bit. Um, Now, as we move into the next stage, there's a square to Saturn on the 15th or so, give or take a few days. You may have some tension be- between your work environment and your relationship environment, some push and pull around the June 15th timeframe. Maybe your significant love or business partner is a real downer on you during that time. And uh, you just have to get through it. It doesn't last long, but go back to March 2nd. If you had a crisis or a problem or intense difficulty, maybe with someone significant in your life, it could kind of blow up again on June the 15th, give or take a few days. And then we move into June the 17th when Venus becomes a part of the story. And then on the 21st Mars, that flow between Mercury and Venus Mars is going to open up something to do either with some quiet backroom deals and negotiations, 12th house, this is going to increase your uh, success in your work and your reputation and your even your money and that you create in the work you do, especially if you make revenue from foreign shores, which some people I know do. But also this energy, is this Mercury, he's your number one guy, just like the Gemini rising. If he's up here talking to Venus and Mars in the 12th house, there could be people literally working in your behalf to su- help you succeed by like, I don't know, sending reviews in about how great you are or talking to the boss about how that, you know, we think this person needs more money. You know, allies can be coming out of this situation instead of detractors. Bed pleasures is Venus, Mars, and a lot of your sexual bed pleasures are ramping up during June, July into July 10th. Now, this is not to do with your work at all, of course, but it may make you feel when you go to work, you feel really good because you got a lot of hormones that are positive running through your body through what looks like a time in which, as I said, with Mars here till July 10th, huh, you're going to have a lot of uh, more intimate, joyful times with others or even yourself. Anything else I want to say, Virgos? Um, no, I think that's it. If you want to travel to a foreign land, this is going to be really good for that. Um, so I would do that too. That would, could be a wonderful delineation. Um, Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is going to be um, the yearly transit on June 11th to the 26th uh, of Mercury in your ninth house. Fantastic for foreign travel trips and journeys. It's also really good if you wish to win in legal battles and negotiate success and have contractual agreements coming out of it. I like that there is a little tension earlier on with Mar- uh, Saturn. You could have some work tension, some tension with someone in a co-worker space around June the 15th, even a bit of a, a glitch to do with, you know, something to do with pets or tenancy arrangements or rentals. But then that'll smooth out as Venus and then Mars love you up from the 15th to the 21st of the 17th to the 21st of the month. Um, Success through friends who wish to help you. Endeavors to do with foreign lands and travel involving friends and allies. A lot of excitement around new ways to make money in your career and have great gains and maybe changing your tactics around how you do accrue money from your 10th house of career. And finally, if you're single, this can look like romance blossoming in your life if you're looking for love, but it definitely looks like romance coming out of friendship circles and groups of belonging, like going to the, you know, society of the da-da-da's or the shamanic, you know, meetings or the astrologer groups. Hmm. Um, already Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. If this is your sky, you're looking at the Mercury in the eighth house, really good for more money in your life, really good for real, real estate, perhaps, 
um, but also for things to do with and mortgages to do with stock investments taking off things to do with 401k other people's money um, June 11 26 good news about money that you have saved uh, tax rebates who knows business partnerships and a little tension on the 15th of June with maybe a lover or a child and a financial glitch there but then it all smooths out Yes, it does. It really does smooth out as Venus and Mars in the career and reputation space send beams of love back to Mercury in your money and chunky money house. Really a good time for negotiating a new salary and you getting a bonus payment or having something financially positive happen in the workspace. And now Mars up there, you're either very motivated and passionate or you're making a change. Even someone in the workplace may quit and that opens up space for you. With Venus up there, though, your reputation is in the high seat until the end of the summer into early October. So it's really likely changes in the workspace benefit you greatly as the sky is loving you up in June 11th to 26. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Let me, um, I would say for you, this is a time in which your yearly Mercury transit is focusing you significant on your significant marriage partner. If you have an audience in a marketplace, this will help you sell and message your thing out there in the world and do really well, especially until June 21st, while the sun is still shining in your seventh. Um, if you are with somebody, there's a lot of communication and a lot of conversation going on, maybe a lot of uh, new ideas coming up for you and your significant other. And there's a bit of tension there with that significant other, maybe on June the 15th, give or take, about property, land, home, and real estate, and maybe about where you want to live or something like that. Later on, though, on the uh, 17th and the 21st, there's this glow between Mercury and Venus Mars, and this could be about mm, positive developments with a significant other to do with trips, travel, foreign lands, foreign shores, court and legal matters, including visas and citizenships and stuff like that. Be careful as well. I mean, Venus does rule your house of rentals. And so there also could be, because of that early conflict, questions about rental, rental properties needing to be resolved with a significant business or marriage type partner. For the most part, it indicates a time of a lot of communication going on with somebody significant in your life. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising. This is a sign, um, this is the time of year, June 11th to the 26th, where every time this happens, you get some kind of success to do with pets, some kind of new a rapid fire communication going on in the workspace that may benefit you and this time maybe new contracts and agreements around the work and work routines or good things happening to do with rentals properties tenancies a uh, landlord stuff and maybe even if you want to dating this is a dating house a six house and but there could be a glitch in the whole dating scene if it's an online app especially around june 15th watch for some tension or trips and travel tensions that are obstructive on June the 15th is something you wish to achieve when it comes to pets, travel, or rental agreements. There is a lot of flow in your money house. And if you need to get a mortgage, a loan, you need to get a, a, a debt repaid, you need to um, get some kind of money from some uh, shared resources with another. Venus all summer is in glowing up your shared resources house. And you may also find that Mars is helping you get clear away and change things that don't need to be there. Venus keeps bonifying it. So if money was falling away from your savings, your 401k, your, you know, that kind of money, your investment money, things are picking back up again when Venus gets here on June the 5th and will be there for four months. I do think that this window of time with Mercury, though, is really good for cautious investment strategies and structures, especially if your monies are connected to uh, your work environment anyway, like you buy into the stock or something, the company stock or something like that. Just watch out though, um, in the beginning, it's some kind of disagreement with someone you might be dating or committed to in a significant relationship, just because Juno, Mercury in the house of dating could cause a conflict to do with things to do with your third house, trips, travel, siblings, between a significant other and something to do with those third house matters. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Is, this is the Mercury uh, yearly transit, June 11th to the 26th through your natal fifth house. This is where you can have a lot of conversations with your kids. This is where you can have a lot of conversations with your lover. And it can be very lovely because the communication is swift and fluid and easy and it's binding and bringing greater union with Juno there and the sun solar energy as well for more truth. Truth speak is going on as well. This is true, of course, until the sun leaves on the 22nd of June, 21st of June, but it's good till then 
sun. Um, Mercury here as well is all about talking to that Mars around the 15th of the month. There could be some money tensions and difficulties with a child, with a resource that you have, and maybe uh, in contrary d disagreement with a lover. Um, Saturn in your second house is making you realistic and sober-minded and stable in your finances over the next three years. And all of a sudden, there may be a leisure pleasure expense, uh, Mercury commerce buying, like he wanted to rent a I don't know, golden palace opportunity getaway. And all of a sudden there's some tension, you know, in this part of the sky. You know, if you're like me and Aquarius rising with your own entrepreneurial fifth house business, you could have some conflict with a merchant. You could have some conflict with a client maybe because the sun rules the house of your seventh house clients and your tension around money. It's so short lived though, but there could be some disagreement around finances with a client or a customer or something like that around the 15th. Things soften up of course, because then Venus and Mars get involved. Venus is on the 17th, Mars on the 21st or so. And this is going to cause a really good energy between children and uh, significant others, legal agreements and business arrangements, things to do with um, your publicity and your public profile. If you have an independent business as an artist or creator, you get a contract, you could get some new agreements, something really good going on here. Fifth house is the muse and the artist house. But also if you have a significant love relationship, this really begins around the 17th to super glow for you and something to do with the ease of communication on the 17th and excitement and passion and developments of new momentum and directionality in that love and romantic relationship. Single Aquarians, this could be a lovely sky, June 11th to the 26th, to meet someone new and bake in a very positive relationship vibe into that new relationship. First and always first, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. You've got sad oh you've got mercury in the fourth house of property home land and real estate where you live legacy wealth home and homeland if i didn't say that and what you do in a private life emails phone calls texts chatter chatter you're busy doing a lot of reading or writing or communicating from home um there may be some tr commercial transactions to buy sell or negotiate a home especially leases because venus and saturn in the house of leases suggest also the energy of transactions that involve the word tenancies rentals and landlords this is very acute, you know, and, and exciting energy that comes into play around the 17th and the 21st in that area of time. Also, maybe some things to do with pets as well, if that's a part of your life. Um, and if you're single and you want to start dating, this would be something to do with dating close to home. Now, also, you may say there's that tension on June 15th, and that's you holding the ball. You are Saturn. You are more stern, strict, and stoic. And you're having a disagreement with that Mercury in the fourth house. Now, it could always work out because maybe you're just giving form and structure, structure to contracts, agreements, and negotiations, or emails and phone calls. And, um, you know, where Saturn is sitting, you know, he's ruled by Jupiter in your third house. Some of that may involve things to do with travel as well. And you may have some disagreements with mm, something going on, on the 15th to do with your travel plans and things to do with your property and home considerations. With Juno here until the 22nd of the month in your fourth house, there's definitely like contracts happening. And it can involve travel, but it can also involve home and property, real estate. Maybe for some of you, even purchasing with Venus ruling the eighth house of mortgages. Um, so tell me how it happens. Tell me what happens, all of you. I would love to hear how this played out for you in the comments. I read all my comments. So, I mean, if you tell me some amazing stories, believe me, after the fact, I'll be reading them and checking in with you. Thanks for listening. Recording on May 30th. Patreon gets this ahead of you guys without ads. Five bucks a month. If the ads are driving you nuts, come join me on Patreon. In the meantime, check out Malena's earrings and the description box below. Everything I'm doing is in the description box below. Um, classes, courses, um, my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter. I forgot to shout it out at the beginning. I'm going to have a big special in June that now I forgot to put in this video offering you guys uh, a special perk by joining my newsletter. But if you join my newsletter now and you don't even know what the perk is, you're going to get it. And all 3,000 people, uh, 2,700 people in my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter, we're going to get a big surprise gift from me in June. So there's your tempting lure to come join my new weekly newsletter. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you on the next video, which will be Saturn Retrograde in June. Ciao, ciao.